Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Empowering Musicians podcast. I am your host and founder of Empowering Musicians, Michael Manley. And um, welcome to the special Labor Day weekend edition of the podcast. Um, one of the things that was motivating me to do a show called Help My Kid Wants to Major in the Performing Arts has to do with the fact that um, one, it's Labor Day weekend, and we have to think about artists in terms of being workers, um, like other workers in our in our society. And also, it's back to school time. And so a lot of folks are either entering college, maybe you're entering your sophomore or senior year of high school, and it's time to start thinking about college. Um, we have a lot of money in the arts in our society that is... Uh, earmarked for and donated to arts education um, for actors, musicians, performers, writers. Um, and there's a lot of investment in it as a social good. And there's a lot of good reason for that because there is a lot of studies that show that performing, acting, um, dancing, taking part in the arts is really um, great for the rest of your learning and for social skills and other reasons. Um, I think the difficulty comes down to when parents think about, oh, this is so great. I'm looking forward to my, my son or daughter becoming a nurse or a doctor or um, learning a trade um, that's going to really um, be useful and, and uh, lucrative for them and make them have a lot of stability. And then it turns out that they actually want to go and major in this thing that they've been doing in college. And people think, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Right. Um, so I've developed these uh, 10 questions that I'm hoping will guide parents and students as they navigate this question about if I wanted to pursue a college career in the arts, how is, uh, what's the best way to do that? So um, by the way, I wanna say shout out to my good friends in Local 77 in Philadelphia in honor of Labor Day. I am wearing a union shirt, of course, which is our Local 77 United and Solidarity musicians. Um, so hey, folks in Philly, hope you can tune into this later if you're not watching now. So. The first question I think that is going to be asked, and by the way, these are in three different categories. One is kind of about who you are as an artist. One is about the kind of life you want to have. And, and the third category is really about the kind of arts education you might consider post high school. So um, we're going to start with our green cards. These are really about you. So these are all framed from the, the student's point of view. So if you're a parent, <laughs> I would definitely take these questions down and ask them of your, um, your child who is interested in the arts. So the first one, am I a creator or a performer? So I think most people think, well, of course, I love, I love to act, I love to dance, I love to play music. Of course, I'm a creator. Um, I've said this before, performance is very much like being an athlete, it is very little about it that's creative. We don't control the music we play or the dances we dance or the plays that we act in. We don't control the words we say if we're actors. Um, it's a very interpretive versus a creative art form. So if you're somebody who is extremely creative visually or, or with words and you love to write or paint um, or you're, you're passionate about, um, um, say, choreography versus dance, you might consider what kind of artist you want to be. I think a lot of folks think about going into, I think many know what they're doing, right? There's a lot of musicians who understand that the technical demands of that work in mastering those skills is gonna be much more like an athlete. Um, there are some who start that way and decide later on that they're gonna be composers, say, or other um, types of more creative work. So I think you have to understand if I'm, if I'm a person who is creative and I'm, I'm thinking of creativity, not in terms only of arts, right? So being, um, being a psychologist, running um, a, a company, uh, running a nonprofit, these can be very, very creative jobs um, in terms of the amount of um, control that you have in thinking about strategy and thinking about direction, thinking about developing new products, thinking about, um, you know, building a nonprofit, let's say. Um, those are more creative in some respects than 
sitting in, in an orchestra or, or sitting on, on an opera stage. And so knowing what kind of artist you want to be and if you are comfortable being an interpretive artist versus a creative artist is really important to know before you start um, and you get down a path where you're like, I thought I wanted to do this, but actually there's other things that I want to do that feel much more creative to me. So question one, am I a creator or a performer? Question two, all right, how do I feel about teaching? Now, when I was an undergraduate, I, um, I had a, a kind of almost um, allergy to marching band and there was no way I wanted to do it ever um, after my high school career. So I, I vowed that I didn't want to major in education because I thought I never want to do that. I don't want to teach. I'm not going to be a, a band director. Um, however, it, it's actually true that most everyone in the arts teaches either as a private teacher or teaches on the college level or ends up teaching in um, public schools. Um, everybody does it. So if you hate teaching, if teaching is really something that you can't stand the idea of, you might want to rethink whether or not you want to pursue a career in the arts. Because as I said, everybody teaches um, at some point. So um, the third question is, do, this is a good one. Do I understand that artists are workers? So what do I mean by this? Um, it's really easy for us to think about being backstage and like the green room is like, you know, the great equalizer. Everybody's, everybody's equal in the green room when we're all drinking champagne in our tuxedos. Some of us are wearing them as a uniform, right? And some of us are wearing them as um, a sign of our, of our status or our wealth or the fact that we love the arts and we can actually consume these kind of things. And I think that it's important that artists understand that it's perfectly fine to, um, you know, uh, feel that camaraderie in, in that situation and that, that fellow feeling around the love of the arts, but that economically the people that support the arts, the people that are coming to your concerts are, they're not, they might be, they consider themselves professional. Some of them might be entrepreneurs, um, even, even high level professionals. Um, some of them see themselves as workers, not many, but you are definitely a worker. And what I mean by that is that you achieve your um, economic security and the benefits that you need through a process that we call collective bargaining. And that means um, that you have the power of all of other artists standing with you in order to win what you need. So I can't think of a better example of this than the sag after strike going on right now. So um, you have people, um, even, uh, you know, like Fran Drescher, now the president, you have, you have Tom Cruise on, on, the, on the picket lines. You have these people that you think, um, when you see them on TV or in films, that why would they need a union, right? They, these are people that are making millions of dollars. Um, they, they don't seem like, quote, workers to me, the people that maybe pick up my trash or the, the nurses that tend to me in the hospital. Um, very much so, right? Because without the collective power of their voice together, it's clear right now that the studios don't wanna give them what they need to maintain and build on their careers and have a future where other workers can come in and win what they need and, and have the basics, right? So if you're not comfortable with that, if you think, well, I really wanna be an entrepreneur, I, would, I, would, I, wanna, I wanna run a, 500, a Fortune 500 company, whatever those thoughts are in your head, like if, if you're not comfortable or you don't really wanna honestly own the fact that you're a worker, again, maybe this is not um, something for you or something that you need to deal with before you pursue it. And um, I think that many um, many artists have probably not gotten what they, they've needed, right? In terms of winning good contracts that pay them fairly because they don't understand that they're workers, right? They don't understand what that means and the fact that they have to, band together with their colleagues to win the change they need in their lives. So again, understand that artists are workers. Um, that's the, the last one of our green questions. So moving on to the kind of lifestyle area. So this is a good one. Where do I want to live? 
If somebody says to me, you know what? I love the violin. It's my passion. Uh, it's my favorite thing to do. And um, I grew up in rural Wisconsin and that's just my favorite place in the world to live. And I can't wait to buy a farm there and live there. I would say, well, if you want to play the violin, you're going to live in one of maybe five cities, right? If you're going to freelance, if you win a, a, a teaching job, you know, you might have more flexibility to move around. But um, if you want to live in rural Wisconsin, probably, you know, if you had a remote job um, that you could do uh, from home, you could live in rural Wisconsin. You can't really live in more than about five or six cities and, and work as a musician or as a dancer or as a singer or as, as a visual artist even um, in terms of like getting noticed, getting the kind of um, having a pool of work that's going to support you, right? So again, if you're not willing to live in urban areas, if you, um, if you have a very real passion for wanting a certain type of lifestyle that's around um, a, a, a certain place that's not in those, those urban centers, again, you might want to reconsider, right? Unless, you want, unless you're comfortable teaching, right? You could always teach almost anywhere. And that's one way to kind of like have a compromise. It's like, well, I love, I love the visual arts, but I also love rural Wisconsin. So I'm gonna be an art teacher and live in Wisconsin. That's a, a very achievable goal. But if your goal is again, to, act, to perform more than teach um, or to paint or write more than teach, you might wanna look at other cities and the fact that um, there are very few of those where you can thrive. So where do I want to live? Important question. Now, am I willing to travel a lot? This is a really good one, um, especially for performing artists, right? If you are a singer, dancer, actor, musician, um, you're going to have to travel. Um, a lot of my early work was in touring, um, both in the opera fields and the Broadway fields. And that's a, a really good way to get into, um, at the time for me, it was a way to get into work maybe on Broadway eventually. I left New York, so that wasn't really a question for me. That was one of the first of many times I left New York and then moved back later. But um, that's, traveling is important, right? And it's not just touring, right? Touring is, is one thing. Um, but if you think about the fact that you live in Chicago, and you want to make a living as a performing uh, musician. Um, you might be traveling to Peoria. You might be tra traveling to Evanston all the time. You're going to be traveling even farther um, to other, other satellite orchestras around your, your area or satellite uh, ensembles um, and theaters, right? So traveling is something that you're going to have to do a lot of. Again, if you hate traveling, this may not be the life for you. So this is a really big question. And I alluded to it earlier. And um, I, I thought about how I was going to phrase it. And I think what I came up with was, what does wealth mean to me? Right? So um, we've, we've all, those of us who have had a, a or have a career or have had some career as, as performers have had the experience of being backstage, right? Or being in a green room or a reception and having a great conversation with somebody who is super passionate about the arts. And they'll say something to us like, I absolutely love the cello and you're so lucky to play the cello, Michael. I just, I, I envy you so much because it, it was such a passion of mine. And unfortunately I had to go off and become uh, an MD, and now I run the entire uh, hospital system of our city. Um, and, and you kind of politely nod and smile and say, yeah, I do feel really grateful for being able to do what I do. Um, and the difference is going to be that, you know, the person you're having a conversation with is probably going to be driving home in a, a, you know, a Land Rover or a BMW to a, a very, very um, comfortable home in a nice neighborhood, you might be worried about how you're gonna pay rent that month, right? Um, uh, because you're just scrambling to make, to make the bills. And that's just, um, it's never gonna, I don't see that, that changing really, right? So for some people, um, and, and this doesn't have to do with happiness, I wanna say that right off. 
the person in my scenario, me, the cellist, might be much happier than that other person, right? Um, but it's just important to know that if you per pursue a career in the arts, you're, you're going to have a very middle class life, right? Um, that you're probably not going to be driving the same types of cars as the people you're in those conversations with um, in the green room or in the reception room. Um, and again, it takes nothing away from the fact that we both share this passion and we share this love of music. And thank God for those people because they're the people that make us able to do what we do through their patronage, through their donations, et cetera. Um, but let's just understand that like, if that's the life we want, if living in a huge house, um, if, if having like five cars is really important to you, um, and, and it is to some people, it's not to me, but it is to some people, you need to understand that like, this is not gonna get you there, right? Um, that if for every Taylor Swift that's out there, there's you know hundreds and hundreds and thousands of musicians and artists and singers and writers who are, um, you know, staff writers on a TV show, or they're backup dancers on a tour, or they're sitting in an orchestra, they're not, you know, uh, et cetera. So, um, so understand that your relationship and definition to how important material wealth is to your well being is something that you need to kind of um, confront before you think about this as a career path. Um, Again, it doesn't mean that you're, you're gonna be precarious. It doesn't mean you're not gonna have the money to pay your bills and get what you need. It just means that there's probably gonna be a ceiling on, on what you can earn and, and where you can um, go. I mean, even the, the, in the orchestra world, the highest paid musicians are probably making what you know a third or fourth tier lawyer would make, right? So if again, money, uh, and material wealth is important to you, think about how the career that you're gonna have is gonna relate to your feelings about that. So now we are off to the nuts and bolts of this about our career in education. And by career in education, I mean, what do we do after high school? Um, maybe you're the parent who's saying, oh my God, I really love that my, my kid loves acting, but I had no idea they wanted to do it, right? Um, and, and in some ways, the education and the, the um, nonprofit funding and the social good of the investment in the arts for, for students uh, in middle school and high school and elementary school is not intended to um, um, raise a generation of artists, right? It's, a raise, it's, it's intended to say, these are important aspects that everybody can benefit from, that it benefits society when we have students who are well-rounded, who are participating in the arts um, on a high level, and um, and and it it it, it's, it serves the greater good. But then you get into this situation where you're like, "Wow, my kid's really really good at this, and they want to do it." So these are the yellow cards. That's our our last uh, last four cards here, and these are the, the the sort of nuts and bolts ones. So the first one should I major in performance or my art, right? Should I major in creative writing? Should I major in dance? Should I major in musical performance? Um, I would say only in grad school. Um, if you do major in it as an undergraduate degree, get a double major. Um, it's just, uh, again, it's very limiting in terms of what you can do with a degree in, in performance um, and it doesn't mean that you shouldn't get one. It just means that you should get one and consider getting a double major as an undergraduate. And why do I say grad school only? Well, you know, an undergraduate career is a really a place for you to really explore and, um, and expand your experience level and your interest level. And I just find it kind of, um, you know, a missed opportunity, let's say, if if somebody is 19 years old and they're sitting in a practice room for six hours a day for four years of their undergraduate degree. It's important to have practice time. It's important to have performance time. But if you only focus on that, you know, I always say, you know, in college, this is our opportunity to really grow and learn and discover new things about the world. And after college, 
we don't need to pay a university to sit in a room and play for eight hours at a time, right? We don't need a university to sit in our own, uh, in front of our own music stands um, and, and hash through orchestral excerpts for hours and hours on end. We can do that on our own. So what, how do we use the undergraduate degree opportunity as a way to expand our experience and our, and our artistic selves versus limiting ourselves to that one thing? So um, that's one reason. And then, uh, but then in grad school, you can do that, right? Like it makes sense to me to say, you know what? I had this great four years where I, I explored who I was and what I might want to do with myself. And now in these two years of graduate school, I'm going to really focus on this one thing that I really want to do as I try to make a career out of it. So for me, it's, should I major in performance as an undergraduate, probably not, but if so, get a double major. And as a grad student, yeah, it's fine to think about doing that after you've had that other, that other experience that has been more broad. Now, a very important question. How much should I pay for my degree? So I'm going to say as little as possible. And you know, the reason I say that is because there is a lot of scholarship money out there for arts and colleges. Um, there are even opportunities often if you are instrumentalist to play in the, the, in the college band because they need, they need people and you can get a little bit of extra money for doing that. Um, but ultimately, these are, again, not degrees that, that are going to lead to six-figure um, and seven-figure incomes, most likely. So, you know, is it fine for somebody to pay an arm and a leg to go to the Chicago School of Business, knowing that they're going to have probably an earning potential that is quite, quite high when they get out? Um, yeah, they might decide that it's worth it to them. Um, but for art, for, again, for artists, you know, we're, we're probably going to end up being um, more middle class. We're going to end up being teachers. We're going to have really rewarding lives, but they're just not going to have the the amount of zeros in our income on our taxes that other other jobs do. So I would say that if you're really passionate about it, um, you know, don't invest, uh, you know, seven hundred thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars a year or fifty thousand dollars a year in, in loans to go to college to get a degree in um, in dance. Right. Like it just doesn't make sense to me. And there's opportunities to get money through scholarships. Now, the other question becomes, well, if I'm, if I'm, not, if I'm not competitive for those scholarships, um, is this something that I should be doing? And that's a different question that's really around your skill level and um, other things. Um, but absolutely, you can teach. You can always teach, which is the great thing about the arts. We always need great art teachers um, of every discipline. So um, how much should you pay for your degree? As little as possible, rely on scholarships and um, the fact that we have a lot of support for education in the arts um, because you don't wanna be in a situation where you have 100, $120,000, $150,000 in student loans when you get out of it, when you get a, a walk away with an arts degree. So, um, this is one I like. It's how focused on my skill and or instrument should I be? Again, this is not the same question as should I major in this? Even if I do major in this, um, I, I think you're missing an opportunity. Again, if I go back to my violinist example and we have our violinist who says, you know what? My only goal is to play a concert master in an orchestra. And so from freshman to senior, I'm going to focus on learning the repertoire, I'm gonna focus on performing. Um, there's other careers, right, that are creative and that are in the arts. That violinist could study composition. They could study other forms of music like jazz um, and world music that are not part of the classical repertoire. They could study conducting, right, and learn what that skill is. They might find that they love that as well. So even within the arts, it's really important to diversify. Um, as, an, as an undergraduate, especially. Um, one of the interesting things that's been happening in the world of theater um, is that we have these um, 
interesting shows where uh, reinterpretations or new shows where actor musicians um, are required, right? People that can both sing, dance, um, act, and play an instrument. So um, in some of these shows, they're playing three or four instruments. And some that I've seen have not been the greatest, you know, they're not the greatest examples of those instruments, right? But they, they fit the need of that show. And these were people that had five or six different skills and were able to, to be hired for those jobs versus the person who only does the one thing. So having that, um, not only that broadness within our discipline, if you're a classical musician, you might want to look at conducting or composing, let's say, but also having the curiosity to say, what if I was a, a violinist who also could act or could also dance or could also sing? What does that look like? And what if I was a violinist who, who understood and could perform jazz music? So again, um, how focused on my skills should I be? I would say um, you want to practice, of course, to get better, but you want to also diversify within the art form that you're um, pursuing and also within the arts in general, if arts are your passion. Now, the last question is, I think, uh, a really good one, um, which has to do with, again, what other things um, are available. And that is, what else would I enjoy doing? So um, the worst thing that we can do, I think, is have all of our self-esteem be wrapped up into what we're doing, right? And so I've talked about this in other episodes, um, that um, this is how we serve the world. It's not who we are. So imagine my poor violinist um, is in some sort of a uh, horrible accident where the subway smashes her fingers while trying to reach her violin and she can't play the violin anymore. Um, what's going to happen, right? If that person has no other um, uh, part of their uh, way of seeing themselves, if their identity is solely wrapped up in playing the violin, they're going to not be very happy, right? Until they can figure out, actually, my mission is not just to play the violin. It's to do this, right? It's to serve the world through music. It's to do other things. So, um, having this uh, understanding that by circumstance or because you've figured out that your, your love of your art form doesn't align with some of the other things we've talked about, maybe living in a really uh, fancy home is your goal, um, having the ability to um, you know, have a, li live in the middle of Wisconsin, whatever these things are, that there's a misalignment here. So you have to think about what else would I do? And... Um, this is a really important one, again, because either you may choose that by circumstance, you're no longer able to do that, or that um, it doesn't align with some of the other questions, that having an idea of what else you want to do is really key. And I would say, once you understand that, um, you think about how you can get an education in that area as well. Um, so whether it's political science and uh, dance performance or um, jazz studies and um, journalism, whatever those things are, think about the and that you will add on to your undergraduate education. Because again, you may decide that you have to, um, that you want to do something else or that you have to through circumstance. Um, and I've, I, I think I've shared uh, I've shared this and I've had a, some friends on as, as guests who um, just got to the point where they were like, you know what, I did that one thing and it was really rewarding and I decided to do something else. And it was just um, a clean break, right? That, that they, they were able to just shift into a completely different career and be happy with it. And I think that's great. So um, I think, again, what else would I enjoy doing? is really maybe the key question in all this because uh, you're gonna have to think about that um, as a supplemental income perhaps, or as, a, as another career later on. So uh, let's review all of our questions one by one. So am I a creator or a performer? Question two, how do I feel about teaching? Question three, do I understand that artists are workers? This is a big one for me. I work now in the labor movement and having artists see themselves as workers is really important. Uh, where do I want to live? 
right? Again, rural Wisconsin, not great for freelancing. Am I willing to travel and a lot? Um, again, you're gonna be uh, traveling either within your local region or nationally or internationally if you want to work in the performing arts. Now, what does wealth mean to me? Again, wealth can mean material wealth and that could be the most important thing for you. Wealth could mean um, personal reward in what you're doing. There's other ways to define that, but you have to think about it. Should I major in performance? Grad school, yes. Undergrad, yes and. Um, how much should I pay for my degree? We talked about that as little as possible. And how focused on my skill instrument should I be? Um, again, as an undergraduate, you want to be curious and pursue every uh, opportunity you can to expand yourself as an artist. And then finally, what else would I enjoy doing? So um, I hope you found this useful. If you have friends or family who have uh, any any res relatives who are looking at majoring in performing arts and they're in at the end of their high school career, or if they have kids that are doing so, um, again, please share this episode with them. You can always find my uh, videos on YouTube on the Empowering Musicians YouTube channel. You can listen to replays on Audible and Spotify. And thank everybody for uh, joining me today. And happy Labor Day to all. Take care. Bye.